Well, we're going to be talking about another Geometry Connections to, uh, Toolkit entry today. Uh, this one is Trig Ratios. And uh, we've already been discussing how to do tangent, the ratio tangent. And today we're also going to add in not only tangent, but sine and cosine. So with that in mind here, uh, what you need to do right now in your toolkit is add in this picture right here of a right triangle. Keep in mind these trig ratios, they only work with right triangles. So if it's not a right triangle, sine, cosine, and tangent is not applicable. Uh, you have your angle right here, theta, and directly across from it is the opposite side, and that in this case is y. Uh, the hypotenuse we'll call h, and the adjacent side is called x. All right, so we've got two legs. One of them is opposite, one of them is adjacent. And in this case, because of where theta is, opposite is y. But if we had an angle over here, in this case, x would end up being the opposite. It all depends on what angle we're talking about. The other thing you should know is, just like with tangent, we had tangent is opposite divided by adjacent, which in this case would be y divided by x. We also have these two new trig functions. One is called sine, right up over here. And sine is defined as the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, the opposite side is y, and the hypotenuse is h, so it be y divided by h. And then the other trig ratio we have is called cosine, and that would be the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. In this case, it would be x divided by h. Uh, there's a way, hopefully, for you to remember this easier. And I've kind of put it here in the red letters here, but uh, oftentimes in geometry, we'll say so katoa. In Sokoto is a way for you to remember. So S is for sine opposite divided by hypotenuse. We also have cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And finally, we have tangent divided by, I'm sorry, tangent equals opposite divided by adjacent. So that might be a way for you to remember. So if I were you right now, I'd probably hit pause and restart it up in here in a moment so you can make sure you get all this information down in your toolkit. Okay, so now that you've stopped hitting pause, let's go ahead now. We're actually going to use these ratios here to find the missing sides here. So once again, uh, why don't you go ahead and hit pause and go ahead and copy down this triangle right over here with our missing sides A and B. And then uh, this bottom triangle here where our, the missing side we're going to solve for is W. So once again, hit pause and restart in a moment. All right, so now that you have those triangles written down, let's go ahead and solve these here. So if we're looking at the top triangle here, opposite across from 38 degrees is side A. So I'm going to write OPP here for opposite. Uh, the hypotenuse is over here, and that leaves the adjacent side would be B. So if we were going to go ahead right now and let's say we're going to solve for A, what we could say is, if we wanted to know A, that's opposite, and we also know hypotenuse is 18. So the trig, uh, ra trig function that has to do with opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we are going to say the sine of 38 degrees equals A over 18. And as we were doing before with the uh, tan ratios, go ahead and put it over 1, cross multiply. So we're going to have 1 times A, well, 1 times A is A, will equal 18 times sine 38 degrees. So grab your calculator right now and go ahead and punch that in. So you should be punching in 18 times sine of 38. And when you do that, you should get an answer of about 11.8 if we ran off to two places. So we have, as always, the approximate answer, which is right here, the approximate answer. And this one right here, this is the exact answer. So you need to have both here in your, in your solution. Uh, if you're not getting this as 11.08, either you have a typo in what you're typing in on your calculator or possibly you're in the wrong mode. You want to be in the mode that says degree mode. So you might want to check the mode on your calculator if you're not getting this right. If it says radian, RAD is often the way it's abbreviated on a calculator, you don't want to be in radian mode. So get out of radian mode and get in degree mode. Alrighty, so that's how we'd solve for A. So A ends up being about 11.08 units. If we were solving for B, well, B involves the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse would end up being cosine. So what we'd say in this case is we'd say that cosine of 38 degrees equals B, that's the adjacent side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 18. Once again, put it over 1. 1 times b is b. And 18 times cosine 38 degrees, 
grab your calculator. Oops, a little typo there. Uh, go ahead, grab your calculator, punch that in, and it should be, if we round off to two places, in this case, about 14.18 units. So that's the answer for B there. Finally, down here, we've got another triangle. And in this case here, we've got 65 degrees. Opposite it is 27. So that's the opposite. This over here is the adjacent side. That's W. And this is the hypotenuse down here. So in this case, we, we've got opposite. We need to know adjacent. So that would be tangent, because opposite divided by adjacent is tangent. So what we'd say here is we'd say tangent of 65 degrees equals 27, which is the opposite, divided by the adjacent, which in this case is W. Put tan 65 over 1. Go ahead and cross multiply. So 1 times 27 would equal W times tangent of 65 degrees. You can go ahead and on both sides divide by tangent 65. So we wind up getting, in this case then, W equals 27 divided by tangent 65 degrees. That's the exact answer. And if you grab your calculator and punch in 27 divided by tan 65, you should get about 12.59 units. So those are the other trig ratios. You now know not only tangent, but sine and cosine as well.